Hello everyone. Welcome to 360 on History podcast. Please check out our website and join us on social media. Today we are going to talk about the most pressing issue of our age, climate change. 2019 has seen one big scientific report after another describing the state of our climate and how it will affect not only our future generations but also us. I know that there is a constant barrage of news on this topic and many of you probably have climate change fatigue. However, this does not take away from the fact that we are facing one of humanity's worst crises and like it or not, we have to take action. To do so, we need to understand the issue itself. This podcast is going to make this easy and give you an overview of what has happened in 2019 as this week, world leaders gather in Madrid for the United Nations 25th Conference on Climate Change. It was at the conference in 2015 that nations pledged to do something about climate change when they signed the Paris Agreement. They agreed to two goals, limit warming to 2 degrees Celsius and to try to achieve a lower target of 1.5 degrees Celsius from pre-industrial times. The thing is, temperatures have already increased by 1 degree Celsius since pre-industrial times, so we do not really have a lot of space to maneuver. There is only about half a degree left to reach the maximum. And the prognosis this year has not been good. A host of scientific documents have been released this year, highlighting one main thing. We are at a very crucial time and we need to take action now. Let's start with the report issued in October by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, which is a scientific body set up to monitor global climate impacts. It told us that there is no definitive way to limit temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times by 2030 to 2050. Even the 2 degrees Celsius goal seems unlikely because the pledges countries made at the Paris Agreement are just not enough to avoid even 3.6 degrees of warming. To limit warming to the lower goal would require unprecedented changes on how we approach energy systems, land use, city and industrial design, transportation and building use. Annual carbon dioxide emission levels are still rising. They would have to drop to half by 2030 and zero by 2050. Emissions from methane, which have been rising steadily, also need to be curtailed. At the current rate of greenhouse gas emissions, the atmosphere will warm to almost 3 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times by 2040. The report projected that climate-related risks to health, livelihoods, food security, water supply, human security and economic growth would increase with global warming. The IPCC report followed a study published in June that warned of rising methane levels due to various reasons such as livestock farming, coal, oil and gas mining and distribution as well as burning fossil fuels. When emissions are discussed, we usually tend to concentrate on carbon emissions. But methane is also a very potent greenhouse gas and is 21 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. A molecule of methane is capable of causing 28 to 36 times more heat than a molecule of carbon dioxide over a 100 year period. Recent studies have shown that methane levels have risen from about 1,775 parts per billion in 2006 to 1,860 parts per billion in 2017, presenting an additional challenge to achieving Paris Agreement goals. While some of us made fun of Greta Thunberg and the students' climate strikes, more dire news kept reaching us. 
earlier in November on the 40th anniversary of the first climate summit in 1979, 11,000 scientists warned of a climate emergency and untold future suffering. They assessed the change in human activity since 1979 to the present and showed how they had influenced emissions, temperatures, ice loss, sea level change, ocean temperatures and extreme weather. While there were some positive signs, such as decreases in fertility, increases in cons consumption of renewable energy, institutional fossil fuel divestment, and some advances in carbon pricing, these were undermined by increasing emissions due to Amazon de deforestation, general loss of tree cover, increasing livestock farming, a rising population, and air transport, among others. Basically, everything about the global economic system has led to increasing emissions. In terms of climate change, November was a depressing month. The United Nations Environment Program released its emissions gap report, warning that greenhouse gas emissions were rising so quickly that drastic reductions will have to be made to meet levels set by the Paris Agreement. This means that nations must cut emissions by 7.6% annually from 2020 to 2030 to meet the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal and 2.7% annually for the 2 degrees Celsius goal. Even if all the current unconditional commitments made under the Paris Agreement are fully implemented, temperatures are still on track to rise by 3.2 degrees. This level would trigger wide-ranging and destructive climate impacts. According to the report, greenhouse gas emissions have risen 1.5% per year over the last decade. Emissions in 2018, including from fossil fuel use as well as from land use changes, hit a new high of 55.3 gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Meanwhile, it has been quite clear that to limit temperatures to 2 degrees Celsius, annual emissions in 2030 need to be 15 gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent lower than current unconditional commitments for the 2 degrees Celsius goal. For the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal, they need to be 32 gigatons lower. But instead, just the day before this report, we heard from the UN's World Meteorological Organization in its Greenhouse Gas Bulletin that greenhouse gas levels in the Earth's atmosphere reached record levels in 2018. So, we have achieved concentrations of carbon dioxide at 407.8 parts per million in 2018, increasing from 405.5 parts per million in 2017. This is a 147% rise over pre-industrial level in 1750. There has been an overall 43% rise in what is called radiative forcing, that is the warming effect on climate by greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide accounts for about 80% of this, but methane and nitrous oxide contribute as well. And as I mentioned before, atmospheric methane reached a new high of about 1860 parts per billion in 2018, and is now 259% from pre-industrial level. Atmospheric concentrations of nitrous oxide were 331.1 parts per billion in 2018, making it 123% higher from pre-industrial levels. Despite all the talk of committing to climate action, G20 nations have still not done enough. They collectively account for 78% of all emissions. However, only five of its members have committed to a long-term zero emissions target. In the short term, developed countries will have to reduce their emissions quicker than developing countries for reasons of fairness and equity. However, all countries will need to contribute more to collective efforts. In the last few days of November, there was another stark warning that the world may already have reached tipping points, which scientists called an existential threat to civilization and urged 
that we are in a stage of planetary emergency. These tipping points include the Greenland ice sheet melting at an unprecedented scale, the fast shrinking Arctic sea ice, accelerating ice loss in Antarctica, corals well on their way to being completely decimated, increasing intensity of droughts, fires and pests in important forests such as the Amazon and even the boreal and temperate forests, the thawing of the permafrost and a slowdown of the Atlantic circulation that also could be a result of warming oceans. Rising temperatures are going to result in all of these tipping points being reached soon and resulting in a cascading effect. The last five years have been the hottest ever recorded. And just in the first few days of December, we already have news of a typhoon in the Philippines. It's 20th this year, continuous and unabated fires in Australia, and new dire warnings of melted Greenland ice, which is likely to cause extensive sea level rise. This is in just the last two days. Over the year, we have seen higher frequency and intensity of hurricanes and typhoons, such as Cyclone Idai that devastated Mozambique, unprecedented fires in the Amazon, Indonesia and Malaysia in addition to the recent ones in Australia, and more and more droughts, especially in arid African regions. The current level of efforts are clearly not enough. We are not going to solve this problem with half-hearted solutions. The whole economic system needs a complete overall. As the 25th Conference of Parties is going on in Madrid, cooperative global action to combat climate change has become imperative. According to the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, there is a distinct lack of political will, evident from the fact that there are still subsidies on fossil fuels, no specific and agreed price on carbon, and no taxation on pollution. The conference is hoping to push for extremely ambitious national commitments from all countries and to make $100 billion funding available to developing countries for mitigation and adaptation. Mr. Guterres' exact words at the start of the meeting were, We are in a deep hole and we are still digging. Soon, it will be too deep to escape. But we do have a clear roadmap from scientists and from the Paris Agreement to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, to cut emissions by 45% from 2010 levels by 2030, and to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. Now, we need to set out ambitious work plans to achieve this. Those kids out on the streets are right. We have failed them drastically. We need to listen to them, get out of our comfort zones and take extreme action, not just as individuals, but as nations and jointly as inhabitants of this planet. It is crucial to our own survival. Thanks for listening in. See you again next time on 360 on History Podcast. Mm-hmm.